Made of Skr released on Windows, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One back in July of this year, having been originally slated to come out in 2019 and is now about to release on the Nintendo Switch. It's a survival horror game with an emphasis on stealth and keeping quiet as noise could lead to your downfall, but is it a case of silence being golden or is it silent but violent? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to Wales Interactive for the review code and now let's find out. When it comes to the story, the game is actually based on a few different tales from British folklore, including a song from Welsh folklore based around the Maid of Skur. Set in 1898, you play as Thomas Evans, who has received a letter from his girlfriend Elizabeth Williams. She confides in him that her father is forcing her to sing as an attraction at the family Skur Hotel and that her refusal has led to her being confined to her room. She sends him a locket with a request to compose a song based on the music within it and warns that failure to do so will mean the darkness will besiege the hotel. Confused, he makes his way to her aid and this is where the story begins. The game is a survival horror game set in a first person view. For the most part, you will be traversing the grounds of the hotel or the hotel itself. When in the hotel, things play out in a similar vein to classic survival horror games such as the Resident Evil series with you exploring each room, finding a map and other key items to help you progress. When in the grounds of the hotel, the path is more linear with you having to get to another location or a different part of the estate. Any items you find can be picked up and will be added to your inventory. Your current objective is also displayed in this inventory screen which is accessed by pressing the minus button. Occasionally you will come across a ringing telephone and this will be Elizabeth who will fill you in on a few story points as well as updating your objective and progressing the game on. As you delve deeper into the heart of the estate it becomes very clear that something incredibly sinister is going on and you will soon become acquainted with the antagonists of the story. These mysterious villains cannot see you and instead respond to sound and this sets up the major gameplay mechanic. You are defenceless against these enemies and will need to be completely silent when they are around. If they are too close to you, you can press and hold ZR to hold your breath. The screen will begin to blacken when doing this and this is your cue as to how long you will be able to continue to do so. If you are found by an enemy, it doesn't necessarily mean insta-death as you can take a couple of hits, although you will need to run away quickly before you succumb to your injuries. Healing tonics can be found at times as being injured will mean that you are a bit louder when walking. As with the holding of your breath, the screen will flash red around the edges to signify your current state. This feature does ramp up the tension and whilst there are a few times where I felt I was found despite being completely silent, for the most part it does work well. You can sometimes use environmental objects to distract the enemies or creep behind them and hold your breath, praying they walk past you. A little while into the game you are presented with a defensive object, a device that will emit a sound that completely disorientates the enemies, giving you time to escape. I like that this was introduced a bit later, as it just changes the dynamic up slightly and gives you a new way of tackling the threat you are facing. You will need to find a new cartridge every time you use it, so it doesn't replace the stealth aspect and merely supports it. As well as the conflict, you will also need to find a host of keys and other items to open more of the hotel up, and help you solve occasional puzzles. These are implemented very well, as it wasn't just a case of finding notes or files that give you clues, and was more about having to look for visual cues within your surroundings to work out what you have to do. It was a nice change to the usual use of puzzles in such games, and I would have liked a few more of these in all honesty. To save your game you will need to locate a phonograph and this manual saving is all that's available, there is no autosave feature. Should you die, you will be brought back to the last phonograph you used. Whilst this most certainly isn't the first horror game to use such a feature, Resident Evil used it back in the day with its typewriters of course, but in all honesty it wasn't the best choice for this particular game. There are a few reasons for this. First of all, the fact that you cannot attack back means that you are always at risk of dying. Being put into a new area where you don't know the placement of the enemies or places where you can hide will mean a few deaths. You could just have the misfortune of opening a door with an enemy being right on the other side. The darkness will also lead to times where you can't see an oncoming threat until it's too late. Also in the old Resident Evil games, you could go back to a save room when you started to feel that you were pushing your luck a bit too much. This is the case here too to be fair when exploring the hotel, but in those more linear sections that I mentioned, you will only be able to save when you get to the next phonograph. Manual saves can drive the fear up in survival horror games, working on a good risk reward level, but I really feel that in this particular game it would have worked better with a more modern autosave feature. 
There are a few different difficulty levels to choose between, including easy and normal, which can be switched between on the fly, but also a safe mode, which removes enemies completely, or a hard mode, which limits the saving in the same way that the ink ribbons did, again in Resident Evil. Control-wise, things work well. Movement with the stick is responsive, as is the camera movement with the right stick. The worst aspect was inspecting inventory items, which is incredibly fiddly. It's hard to move the item as you want it, plus there is an overuse of glare, which makes it hard to even see them. This isn't the only problem with lighting, and we'll talk more about that in the visuals section. Thankfully, you do not need to inspect the items too often, so it's not a major issue. Gameplay is creepy, fairly derivative, but effective. When in the hotel itself, it has a Resident Evil vibe to it, which is always a good thing, but the more linear stretches outside of the hotel do mean that the manual saving system is a bit of a misstep. It scores 13 out of 20. Controls do what they need to do for the most part, and they score 14 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, Made of Skur does a good job of creating an eerie setting, with the hotel and its grounds looking grandiose, but foreboding at the same time. It has that classic horror game feel, and definitely sets the tone well for what's to come. I really liked the enemy designs. I liked the angle of the crazed humans with an air of mystery about them. Are they part of a cult? Is it something supernatural? The grimy clothing and face masks, which feel like a mix between Rorschach from Watchmen and Batman's villain Scarecrow, help to create a further layer of menace. Performance-wise, the frame rate is fairly consistent, and I can't remember many stutters in the game, perhaps a few towards the end. However, there is an issue in regards to popping. This is most prevalent, or at least most noticeable, early on when things are taking place outside in the open. As well as this, textures stream in at a slightly delayed rate, causing it to look as if some objects suddenly appear. The outside or bright areas also have an issue with overusing glare, as I mentioned a bit earlier. I always feel that details such as these hurt horror games more than most, as any movement in the shadows should be a moment of suspense, not an effect of the game's graphical limitations. It dilutes the scares. Now, I will say that as you move further into the game and things are naturally darker, it's nowhere near as noticeable. The dark is used to good effect to mask it, to the point where I didn't really notice it anymore. The dark, though, does bring its own issues, as initially, things are way too dark, to the point where in this footage I am calling a lift, and then I can't even see where it is to be able to walk in and use it. I upped the brightness to its maximum, but this made no difference, so I put the gamma up too. This is where there seems to be an odd bug. After increasing the gamma and then pressing confirm, nothing would happen. However, if I went back in, changed the gamma, but then didn't confirm, it would set it to the level that I had originally chosen when I confirmed. Without using this trick, nothing would change, and I was left in complete darkness. This is clearly a bug, and hopefully a patch will fix it, and after a lot of mucking about, I did finally find a level which made the surroundings visible in the dark areas. Handheld mode does have a slightly blurry tinge to it, but to be fair, looks a lot better than I was expecting, and it doesn't look hugely different to when playing on the TV. When it comes to the audio, music is used effectively, building up slowly to help with an eerie reveal, or just to send a subtle chill down your spine. The use of Welsh hymns, sung by Tia Kalmaru, was an inspired choice, and I love the use of a beautiful voice in a horror setting. It's amazing how the visuals can distort your feelings towards something that would usually sound melodic, to instead emote feelings of melancholy at best, and dread at worst. The use of sound in general is impressive, with it being of course a major part of the game. Bump into an object and it will make a sound, potentially alerting the enemy, and I'm pleased to say that such an integral part of the game does work very well. Voice acting is also used, although your character is a silent protagonist. I feel that giving him a voice would have helped the player to empathise with his predicament a little more, but the voice acting that is used, is used to good effect. Visuals are most certainly appropriate, although a few technical issues in terms of popping and some lighting issues, as well as that strange brightness bug, do bring them down, and they score 13 out of 20. Audio works very well, and the use of hymns was inspired, but a silent protagonist does break the immersion just a touch, and it scores 17 out of 20. Made of Skur costs £19.99, €24 Euros or $24.99, or $37.50. Australian It will take up 3.7 gigabytes of your system storage. In terms of hours of gameplay, it's not the longest experience, and will take most people between 5 to 8 hours to complete, with the manual saving system and in turn how many times you die, changing this dramatically from one person to the next. There are a list of in-game achievements for you to unlock, as well as collectibles, and as I mentioned, there is a hard difficulty mode if you want to try that on completion. 
In terms of a physical release, there is one listed on various websites, although it has a quite vague 2021 release date, so I wouldn't hang my hat on that definitely showing up just yet. I don't think that £20 is terribly overpriced, plus there is more than one ending to aim for, and on balance, value scores 13 out of 20. To conclude, Made of Skur is a game that I had a good time with. Its sound-based enemies change things up, and both the story and setting do a great job of getting you invested in the world around you. It's not perfect, the saving system can be frustrating, and the technical issues break the immersion at times, plus there are superior survival horror games already on the Switch. But even with this in mind, I would recommend Made of Skur, although I would perhaps advise waiting for a small sale first. Made of Skur gets a switch up score of 70%. Thank you everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed that review, please do remember to leave a like if you did. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.